it was it was bad. Don't let him fool you. <laughs> Everybody, this is Brian from Because Why Not, and uh, today I'm with Johnny. He's actually my brother-in-law. Uh, he actually has a YouTube channel as well. Uh, I do. My name is Johnny, and I have a YouTube channel. And I am Brian's brother-in-law. Uh, all of that was true. It is. It's all true. We, we wouldn't lie to you on Because Why Not. Uh, he does a lot of cool stuff with cameras and drones, and has some Game of Thrones stuff. If you want to check that out, uh, the link will be somewhere around here or in the descriptions below, depending on you know if I can figure it out. Uh, but today we're going to be doing uh, beer blending. Uh, a lot of people don't either really know what beer blending is or they just do it because they want to get drunk really quick and or gross their friends out. Beer blending's actually been around for, you know, hundreds of years and it's actually how we've gotten a few different kinds of beers to this day, such as porters and then obviously the beer cocktail black and tan. But this also goes back to uh, wine blending and whiskey blending and it's how you get you know a lot of the different drinks that you're actually familiar with with these days so what we're gonna do since we're not experts in any way uh, we just picked out a bunch of different beers and we're going to blend them to our own specifics and see what we can come up with so uh, what do we got here well uh, Brian we have everything from the lightest of beers to the darkest of beers so we, we're starting off with a ballast point Bonto Blonde Ale. Uh, <laughs> next, we have the Bad Beat Brewing. Uh, shout out Vegas local uh, craft brews. Right plus. We've got uh, that, a Hefeweizen by them called Bluffing... What does that say? I'm Bluffing like, isn't Weiss. Bluffing isn't Weiss. It's not. Don't do it. Uh, we've also got the Lindemann's Frambois. Uh, it's kind of like a, a fruity beer. Uh, and as we get a little bit darker here, this is also uh, a fruitier beer. This is a Saison uh, made by Sorachi Ace uh, out of Brooklyn. Uh, next, uh, we've got the Blah Blah IPA. My personal favorite kind of beer is IPA. Uh, so this is where we start to get a little bit more bitter, a little bit more hoppy. Uh, we've got the Ellie's Brown Ale uh, as we get into the darker beers. And then last but not least, we've got Deschutes Obsidian Stout. Uh, named after the volcanic rock, Obsidian. This one should be pretty thick and pretty dark. So, uh, yeah, dude, that's, that's uh, the lineup. I gotta say, I'm, I'm kind of excited, but then again, I'm also not excited at all because I actually don't really like beer. Uh, out of <laughs> all of them, the fruity one is my favorite, and as we go probably anywhere past this line here, I'm gonna start making faces and I'm not gonna like it. And... Hey, that's what blending is all about, right? It is. It's becoming. It's uh, getting something that you, you know, that you enjoy something, a new flavor, something that nobody, nobody's ever tried before. So hopefully, all of this nobody has ever tried. <laughs> and depending on how we do, they might never try it again. Yeah, most likely. So what we're going to do today is we're each going to make three different blends with all of these beers. Um, they have to at least include three types of the beers and they have to have just a certain percentage of each. They're each gonna be eight ounces, and then we're gonna split those up, and we're each gonna try each other's three blends to see what we think. Um, I can just say right now, mine are probably gonna be on the lighter side, just because that's kind of what I go for, but I also might do something just to gross Johnny out. So we'll see. Let's do it. All right, <laughs> let's do it. So here, um, here's our mixing glass, right? Do you want to start? You want to do the first one? Yeah, let's do it. Get it. Okay. So we're going for eight ounces, obviously. That's one cup. So half of this. I'm going to start out with... I'm going to go with the uh, Bluffing Isn't Weiss. Local brewery. Love it. Nice. Now, is there a strategy to this, Brian? Are you going to taste the beers by themselves first so that you can kind of figure out what you want to mix, what flavors, or are we just going in based on like the color of the can and the label? That's actually a really good <laughs> point. Um, me personally, I'm not going to because I already know that I don't like the majority of these. So it's not gonna make uh, a difference. You know, not that I, I don't like the companies or the brands, I'm just not a big fan of beer. So this is an exploratory uh, thing for me. If you want to, by all means, go ahead. Um, I'm just kind of gonna go at it. Let's do it. Okay, so let's do... Mm. 
I should probably be pouring this better. <laughs> but let's go two ounces of the uh, the Hefeweizen. Gotta make sure it's all good. We'll go with the Ooh, what is gonna be good with this? I don't like IPAs. I'm sorry. This is probably I honestly probably like dark beers more. So I'm gonna go two ounces of the blah blah blah. And then I'm gonna do the framboise to finish it off, of course. Bottle opener? Bottle opener. Right. Awesome. Uh, cork? Oh, cork. <laughs> Jeez, I'll be right back. It, yeah. So we're going to do four ounces. Ooh, look at that change in color. Wow. That is impressive. So we'll give it a, a little swirl, not too much. <laughs> oh. Mm. Okay. It smells weird. Yeah, it's just that's a good uh, word. But I like the color. Okay, so now I'll try to pour this properly. Well, Brian, I'm going to tell you I'm definitely more nervous than I expected to be. I, I wasn't nervous pouring this, but I was nervous after I smelled it. Yeah. Okay. So just to describe the smell a little bit, uh, if you've ever had frambois, uh, if that's how you say it, framboise, uh, it's, uh, it's like really fruity. It's almost like, it's like cranberry juice. Like I, I smell cranberry juice in it. Let's see. Well, it's supposed to be raspberry, so maybe it's... Raspberry, yeah, it's, I get but raspberry. I get, I get the tartness of the cranberry too, yeah. So that's really overpowering, but then you also get like the hoppiness of the IPA kind of coming through too, the bitter. I'm not even getting any of the Hefeweizen, but let's try it. Hmm. I, I actually don't mind that. Yeah, I actually don't mind it either. That <laughs> went think, down pretty nice. I think that's really good. So what was that again? That was two ounces of the Frambois. No, no, two ounces of the Hefeweizen. Okay. Two ounces of the IPA and then four ounces of the... And then four ounces of the, of the Frambois. Wow. Yeah, it's like really refreshing and light. It's got a little bit of an aftertaste. I don't mean... But to that's me again, the, all beer do, but... That's the IPA for sure. Not a bad start, though. I could do another one of those, honestly. Honestly, not a bad start. Yeah, and I don't know what, how, but it didn't have like that bubbly carbonation like a typical beer does. It wasn't as heavy going down. It's nice. Yeah, I, I was very surprised with that. So uh, let's see what you can come up with. I, on the other hand, am a, a big fan of IPAs. I actually don't really like porters or dark beers very much. So I think I'm going to try to sort of like make a, a happy medium. Okay. These two beers. So I'm going to go with the Obsidian Stout. Remember, it has to be at least three. Right. So I, I know that these two are going to be in there. Uh, and then I think, you know, I'm going to go crazy here and I'm going to put the brown with the black. I honestly thought you were going to say Zana. I thought I, thought I was, too, you know what? Yeah. Mm, now you said that. All right. Actually, I'm going to go say Zana because it'll add a little bit of fruitiness to round out the. Uh, these flavors. A good thought that I never would have came up with. I don't really know much about Cezanne's. So Cezanne's definitely has some some fruity notes to it. It's also it's it's a little bit like a vegetable vegetable. It's or like very vegetal, yeah. Floral, you know. 
Um, and then uh, obviously IPA, super hoppy, bitter. Uh, and the stout, it said, has like a chocolatey flavor kind to it. Kind of espresso. It. Yeah, espresso yeah. and chocolate. So this should be, this should be pretty interesting. So here we go. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use the good old metric system, counted on by the majority of the world. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're going 100 milliliters, for those of you following along, of the stout. Let's go. So how many milliliters are in a cup? Uh, enough. <laughs> right answer. <laughs> That's about 50 milliliters of the IPA, and then we're going another 100. Oh, he's going over. All, All right, that's fine. fine. Here we go. So we got 100 mils of the Obsidian Stout, yeah. 100 mils of the Saison, and then 50 mils of the IPA. Bam. Give it a little mix here. Yeah, give it a mix. Look at the head on that. It's yeah, this actually reminds me a little bit of like a caramel latte or something. I kind of want to put ice cream in that. <laughs> that actually would be delicious. You know, root beer float. I did go a little over. That's fine. We're all we're all having fun. There we go. Oh, I can smell it from here. It's like half head, half body. That's amazing. Hmm. Oh yeah. I only smell the stout. I yeah. I only smell the stout too. But that's probably because the head is on the top. The head is mostly the stout. Rough, huh? I don't like it. No, okay. Um, I was actually gonna say it's delicious. I'm, <laughs> I'm a fan. Yeah, it's like, um... <laughs> you you and me all right? No, I'm fine. I'm, okay. just, I'm, I'm gonna finish it, I'm just... <laughs> what? So what, what stands out to you about the flavor? It's so bitter. It is really I, bitter, yeah. I, okay, if I'm going cocktails, I like some. I'll, I'll, I like like a sweet martini, mm -hmm. but I'll go. I don't know. I'll go whiskey coke. I'll go whiskey. I'll go rum. But even rum is on the sweeter side. And this is this is just totally bitter. I don't drink coffee. This I'm getting coffee. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what I like about it. I like my coffee black. I don't really put a lot of sweeteners in my drinks. I like cocktails where I can really taste the alcohol. Uh, and so this is definitely like a a, a bitter coffee forward like just it's kind of good like that actually it. makes sense you like your you like your cocktails um flavor forward mm -hmm. and you add he had bitters to a lot of his cocktails that's true old fashions manhattan stuff like that and yeah i guess this kind of explains it so if you're into that type of thing um you should think about mixing these three beers together i will say one thing though this didn't again it didn't taste like a mixture to me it tasted cohesive it tasted like one Beer. That's true. I, I agree. And I think it's interesting because when we buy liquor and like mixers and stuff, we're always mixing things, but beer, we never really think about actually combining the flavors together. Uh, and it, you know, you said it's, it's been done for hundreds of years. So, um, yeah, I might start doing this a little bit more often. It is kind of weird though. I, I went out to a restaurant and I don't know if I did this on a dare or just because, but I actually had I took Guinness and mixed it with champagne, hmm. and everybody thought it was, it was the grossest thing ever, but honestly, I liked it better than just drinking, <laughs> than just drinking the beer straight up, because right. it added a little more effervescence and uh, dryness to it. Yeah, I, I think you can have a lot of fun kind of balancing out different drinks, so I'm into this. So, me, Brian, going to go back to the uh, American Standard Cup. <laughs> And we have an open two of them, so I guess I'll just start off with uh, start off with the blonde, the uh, Ballast Point Bonito blonde ale, and see uh, see how that goes. Because I actually want to see the color change again. I really like that when I first did it. So, ooh, this one since this is really light, I kind of want to taste this. I, I think everything else is gonna. And yeah, it and it overpower, it. overpower it. So I'm gonna do. I like the color already. Mm. 
I'm going to do five ounces of the blonde. And then I'm going to go the brown, of course. And we're going to do... We're just going to do... I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to, I'm going to do one and a half of this. Wow, look at that color changing. I like it. Now, we're going to get some more color because I'm going to go back to this. I want to see if this really... The, uh, if the uh, stout really overpowers this. We're gonna add the rest. Just a one and a half ounce. Damn. And yeah, it looks just black again. We'll give it well, a little there, stir. Well, there is a little like tinge of red in there. It almost looks like a, like a really dark coffee brew. All right, let's give this a pour. Oh, oh. So, um, okay. oh, sorry, I forgot that was yours. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. I thought you were doing me a favor. Yeah, here. I'll, get the, I'll get the rest of the foam on that one then. We see how I accidentally poured slightly more in his. Yeah. This, okay, this one actually smells more light. It does. I mean, that shouldn't be surprising, but... Huh. I don't know. I don't, like, I, I wouldn't drink this, but I would drink it, you know? Like, yeah, it, to me, it feels like the, none of the flavors really stand out when they're blended together at that um, ratio. Yeah. Like, the, the, fruity, or not the fruitiness, but like the freshness of a Hefeweizen that would normally sing through gets muted by the stout and the brown ale, so you don't really get the oh, benefits of this. The blonde ale. Or the blonde, sorry, the blonde ale. Um, oh, even even more, like, uh, you know, tr traditionally even more fresh and like, you know, summer day, mm -hmm. hot out, you know, super refreshing. That gets muted by these two, so the best part of this you can't really get. And then the brown... Um, that has like just all of that punch of flavor is almost like fighting against the stout when I drink it. Um, but there's not a lot of the stout in there, so I don't get any of the coffee or the or the chocolatey flavors. Well, okay, for me, I get the really light, like the really lightness from the the blonde. It's super easy to drink. Yeah, like, I could ch you can chug this easy if you want, but you don't get any of the flavor. You get the flavor of this. It's like having a dark beer. But light, like you get all the coffee. Like, I still get the coffee flavor, maybe because I'm just sensitive. Like, so maybe, yeah. Right. Right. I think that I like the color the most, though, mm. as I as I put it up to the light. Yeah, it does have a very neat, like, dark. If that matters brown. to you, if the the color matters to you. Listen, I don't see color. So, and I'm actually colorblind, so I really don't see color. Literally, yeah. Uh, and on that note, as he finishes this up, we're gonna rinse out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the best. back to beer. Back to beer. Back to beer. I think I'm gonna go with the light beer right now. I actually wanna see what the three lightest beers blended together taste that's, like. That's, I honestly wasn't even gonna think about that, so that's pretty good. Yeah, and I think because then they'll, they'll maybe all like kind of sit on top of each other to support a different flavor, I, rather than fighting against each other. I honestly think we're just gonna taste that. Yeah, that's the, uh, hmm. I mean, you can still do that. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go really light on the, the liniments. So here's what I'm thinking. Let's go with, like 50 milliliters of the Lindemans, or even less. I'm just gonna watch it from this side here. I do love that color too. That's, yeah, 50. So for the, uh, the good old cup system, uh, that's about maybe a quarter of a cup, not even, less than a quarter of a cup, right? 
That's a half, so that's a quarter. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's less than a quarter. Less than a quarter of a quarter. Let's say a sixth. Yeah. Let's go with that. Uh, now we're going to go Bad Beat Brewing Hefeweizen. And I'm going to take that up to about a half a cup. I don't know if we mentioned, we said this was a local brew, which it is, but I don't know if we mentioned where it's, where it's local. It's local in Henderson, Nevada. Yes, it's not Las Vegas, Nevada. It's Henderson. It's a city. But uh, it's cool. It's a great place. Henderson, Nevada is probably one of the coolest cities uh, in uh, the greater Las Vegas area. I would say it, it is. <laughs> I, I, would, I would actually agree wholeheartedly with that. It's a beautiful town. I'm going, now I'm going the pro, what did I say, Bonito, Bonto? Bonito. Bonito. I think I called it the Bonto earlier. <laughs> uh, it's that, uh, that super tall font. So how much did you do on that? Uh, I, d I took it the rest of the way, so it was about a half a cup. Okay. Um, just so quarter or six, quarter, half? You got it. Yeah, it probably doesn't equal a cup. It, well, it, it came pretty close. There's a cup right there. But yeah. in America, a cup is whatever you say it is. That's right. It's whatever you paid for. Yes. Here we go. I yeah. didn't even give it a stir. I forgot to stir it. But you know, I think the pour is gonna is gonna agitate it enough. I think so. That it's gonna mix. I'm excited about this one. I am too. The color is. I think it's gross. The color. Do you? I, it's kind of like mur it's murky water, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It, it's. I think, and I think that's the Lindemans because it's got the fruit in it. It almost looks like grapefruitish. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't mind the, I mean, the color is nice, especially up against the light. Yeah. It smells super fruity still, just from that little bit of frambois. I could drink this. <laughs> it's tart, right? It is a little tart. And, okay, on a February day in Henderson, Nevada, when it's reaching about 76 degrees where everybody else is freezing, <laughs> somehow, right. some way, this is a porch drink. This is a go outside is. and play, uh, what's the, 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 yeah, cornhole. Cornhole. Yeah. This is a cornhole drink. They call it, you know, they call cornhole, uh, what they call it in like Chicago. You no. should know you're from Chicago. I am from Chicago. You I know don't, what they I, call I cornhole? Uh, no. They call it bags. Big? Okay, that's more of a Wisconsin. Well, maybe they don't say, maybe, look, I'm not very good at accents, but I do happen to know that in Illinois, they call cornhole bags. They don't actually call it cornhole. I will ask my cousins then. Or my yeah, dad. validate my, I mean, because I could be totally wrong about that, but there's this one guy who I met from Chicago <laughs> that I work with who told me that that's what it's called. Whether it's bags or cornhole, this I was is the drink. This is the drink for the game. It. Yes, this is good. It's like citrusy and fruity and... Uh, to me, it has a weird, like, back of the tongue taste, though. Like, I still like... I still like the... This is the close second mm -hmm. to me, obviously, because it didn't have any of that in it, but I like the first drink we had better. I agree. So far, the first <laughs> drink that you mixed was the best one that we had. This is definitely close, though. You know what I just realized? Yeah. We're going to get... We're, we're going to get to a point where there's only going to be some beers left, and we're just going to have to mix them. There's hardly any of this left. It's about half, about half, bigger bottle though. Yeah. Plenty, plenty, a little less than half, plenty. So we probably, we probably want to save this one for our last mix. Yeah. Now that, I guess I'll have to come up with something terrible then. <laughs> Only because I like trying new things, and we've kind of strayed away from this end, I'm not gonna do the three darkest. I'm gonna definitely stay away from this one. Actually, no, we haven't mixed more than three this time. That's okay. true, we haven't yet. I'm gonna mix more than three. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with these. Ooh, no, I kinda wanna stay away from that because that's just gonna get raspberry. I'm gonna go the Hefeweizen, the Saison, the IPA, and the Brown. Oh, damn. We haven't done Saison a lot, so I'm gonna do, let's see. So I got to about to get to 300 mils, I think. Yeah, that's okay. about a cup. Maybe maybe 250. Let's see. Yeah, about, about 275. 275. Yeah. So I'm going to do... Until it, until, it, until it feels right. Oh. Battery. Yeah. 
gonna do 100 mils of uh, the Brooklyn Sriracha Ace Saison. I'm away from my part here. It's cool, whatever. Sorry. Changing, uh, changing camera batteries. <laughs> Bam. Bam, got it. Also my initials. Yeah, that uh, is hilarious. Very, very quick. <laughs> uh, okay, so we did the ace. We're gonna do some brown. We did 100 mils of the ace. 100, let's see here. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna do 100 mils of the brown. Wait, 100 mils of the ace, 100 mils of the brown. How much of the Hefeweizen did we do? I didn't do any of it. Oh, you didn't do any yet, okay. The Hefeweizen. I'm gonna do, we're gonna go about 275, so I'm gonna do about 25, 30 mils of the Hefeweizen. Just lighten it up. And then 25, 30 mils of the IPA. It's a big drink, Brian. Whoa, I'm a, a big, I'm a big guy. <laughs> There's a lot of beer in there. <clears throat> so, look at that stir, which has all our residual from the other, of course. Not gonna mix, not gonna mess it up at all. Very minimal amount. Ooh. I don't know that go. Uh, Doesn't yeah. look the best. No. This is a big drink. Yeah. Okay, you need a little more. I'll get most of that this time. Nice. All right, there you go. Get all that foam. All right. So this is a four-way uh, mix. This is a four-way mix. You got the brown, the IPA, the Saison, and the Hefeweizen. Uh, on, the, uh, on the nose, it smells like the inside of a, uh, a, a latex glove. Oh my gosh, I didn't even get that until you said that. It does, doesn't it? Okay, just to be, just for sake of, like, accuracy here. Latex glove. Is that latex? Let me see. This smells more like latex than the actual glove does. Is that latex? Is it rubber or whatever? Rubber. rubber. Close enough. Either, look, I don't know. They're very similar. Is let's latex just say a brand of rubber? All right, let's just try it. It does have some fruit to it, though. <laughs> Huh. I like, ooh, I don't know if it's the brown or the uh, the Saison, but I, I like the little bit of that in there. I do too. I think it's the brown. Um, yeah, it, it has kind of like a, a caramely taste to it. Yeah. This is, honestly, this is how I'm gonna have to start drinking IPAs, just by blending them. I might just have to do this myself, because I don't like, like I said, I don't like a lot of beers by themselves, but if I'm blending them, I can get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Or the best of all four worlds. And you can sort of introduce yourself to a new flavor that you're not comfortable with all by itself, slowly, rather than just force yourself to chug. Yeah, like the flavor of beer. Like, sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> you just don't like it. You know, Brian, they're uh, actually, they're opening up bars where you can pay to blend wine now. Are they? It's a real thing. That's um, actually really cool. I don't. I don't think that they have any in Vegas. I know they have some in LA, uh, because on the latest episode of the Vanderpump Rules on Bravo, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, they were there. They were at a wine blending place. And a big fan of Vanderpump Rules, by the way. Shout out to all the cast members uh, of the Vanderpump Rules who are watching this right now. They are hip and chic. They are, and uh, sometimes they pay to go to bars and blend wine. So I'm just saying that there's a business strategy here. You know, just waiting for us to open a bar where you can blend beer. No one's doing it. You heard it here first. I'm, unless you, unless you just came home from our bar and this video is five years old, which it probably will be by the time it gets the views. In which but, case, uh, you you didn't hear it here first, but you're hearing it now. We said it here first, and you've experienced it. That's right. I'm glad those didn't break. So here we go. I'm going to take um, the stout, the brown. The blah blah, the sriracha ace, 
That's it. Okay, so... Actually, you know, I'm going to put a little Hefeweizen in it, too, because there's a tiny bit. There's oh. there's enough left in there. I was gonna, okay, so that's slightly different for what, from what I did originally, because I, I just switched these out, but now he's adding these and a little splash of this. All right, we'll go five. So we're going five. We're going five. Here we go. We're going... Uh, let's go about... That's a quarter cup. I like this already for how small it is. Yeah. I guarantee I'm just gonna taste that though. Quarter cup of that. We're going brown for another quarter cup. We're going heavy on the IPA because I gotta teach Brian the way of the IPA. A lot of my friends have been trying to teach me the way. IPA is just so delicious. Okay. I'll just stop talking so you can. Yeah, I'm just gonna go a little bit more. You know, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and then uh, let's take this Sriracha Ace here and uh, just pour that in a little bit. And last but not least, good old Bad Beat Brewing. Did Brian tell you where this is from? I think I did. It's from Henderson, Nevada, greatest city in the world. Hey, that's where we're at. That's where we're at right now. That's where we're at. That's where you should be at. Bam. A splash of that. I have never been so confident that this is going to be disgusting. For how much light, <laughs> light stuff you put in there, that's pretty darn it's dark. Still it still only dark. has the foam for this stuff. Yeah, it is, uh, it is very dark. So let's see how it tastes. My stomach is kind of churning. Yeah, Just like those bubbles right now. And there's so much of it, you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I kind of want to let the head subside a little bit. Yeah. Hey, the phone's kind of settled. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's give it a smell. Let's see. Yeah, this. Oh my gosh, that only smells like IPA. <sighs> yeah, it's not good. It's better than the, the second one. It, it is better than the first one I mixed, but it's not good. Oh my gosh. Definitely get the coffee and the chocolate from the stout. You also get the, uh, you get the IPA. You get all the hops. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this one was not good. But because we're men, we'll finish it. We're, yeah. You guys thought that was a uh, a chug clink? Nope. No, we're sippers. Not with the well, not with this beer. We're not. <laughs> or with this beer, we are sippers. Uh. Yeah, this isn't uh, it's not the best thing in the world. I'll tell you, if you've had a bad day at work and you just uh, the intention is to hate yourself, you know, have a couple of these. Have a couple of those. Yeah. Let me get let me get some of that Simba hair. Oh yeah. Uh, hair of the dog that. Barked. A little hair of the dog, that's all you need. Which is, I think, kind of what we'll call this blend. Maybe. I don't know. Mm. Tell me about the hair of the dog, Brian. Ooh. Do you know what that, like, where that term comes from? I don't, but a lot of people, I mean, I bet you're going to tell me. I'm going to look I, it up because I, it's actually a really interesting story. I bet. You know, I called it hair once, and somebody got on me for uh, not referring to it as fur. Mm. So I don't know the difference between hair and fur. Well, some dogs have hair, and some dogs have fur. Like Yorkies have hair. Uh, I would say Simba has fur, right? Sure. So like, you could have multiple hairs, because they're like individual. Can you have multiple furs? Or is it just one fur? Whoa. Yo, I think we just started the new is water wet debate. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> How <Hair>. many furs <laughs> do dogs have? Can you have multiple furs or can you only have multiple hairs and one fur? And we're not talking about rabbits. No. <laughs> <laughs> hair of the dog, short for hair of the dog that bit you, is a colloquial expression in the English language predominantly used to refer to alcohol that is consumed with the aim of lessening the effect of hangover, 
The etymology um, originally referred to a method of treatment of a rabid dog bite by placing hair from the dog inside of the bite wound. That's very interesting. Isn't that interesting? So it used to be if the dog bit you, you take the hair of that dog, you put it in your wound, and that's supposed to prevent you from getting rabies. Uh, so in, in a similar fashion, which it, it would be like the first thing I would think of when I'm hung over, I would want more alcohol that, that made me hung over so that I would heal. So speaking of the uh, hair of the dog that bit you, uh, I guess we're going to go into kind of what we learned today. So hair of the dog, uh, colloquialism, taking some of the drink the next day that gave you the hangover tomorrow. So I feel like after this, not necessarily because we drank a lot, but just because we drank uh, a good mixture, not that the mixture really determines the hangover, uh, that's, uh, that's water content in the body, but I'm gonna go, uh, gonna go along the lines and actually call this next drink, not the last one, the hair of the dog that bit you, because mm -hmm. I think we're gonna mix all seven of these beers now. Um, just a little bit of each. We're not going to finish them because we got a good amount of some of them left. But we're going for a cup and we have seventh. So I'm going to try my best to pour one seventh of a cup. Or, let's see here. Let's just go with 30 to 40 milliliters each of each beer. That'll be somewhat easier to determine. Ooh, no. I'm going to start light. We're going to see this color change. You finish that one, Brian. Ooh, no, that's a, that's a good amount. Is there a good amount in there? Well, yeah, let's see. It's a, there's at least 50 mils. All right. So we'll just go that. That'll be an easy chug at the end. There we go. Half a wizen. Actually, maybe we'll just do 50 mils each. Ooh, 50 mils each. Done. There we go. We should be at 100. 150 with the framboise. Color change. Two hundred with the Saison. Two fifty with the blah blah IPA. Three hundred with the brown, the Ellie's brown from Colorado. And then a good old 350 with that stout. Cool. That's a lot of beer. It is a lot of beer. So at the end of this, we're gonna have each drank like three and a half beers. I just want to point out it's a uh, it's two forty in the afternoon on a Monday. We started probably about thirty five minutes ago. Yeah. Do we have jobs? I don't know. <laughs> At this point, I really after this, I don't know if we will. But let's try. Is that? Half? 350? 75? Yep, that's Nailed half. Nailed it. Let's see. Yeah. That's pretty good. Nice. <sighs> Hair of the dog that bit you. Let's smell it. I don't want to say... I want to make a joke that says it smells like wet dog. <laughs> It actually kind of does. A little bit. It does, actually. That was a good joke. Thank you. <laughs> Last one. All right, whatever. Oh, well. Honestly, that wasn't the worst one we've had all day. It wasn't. No, the second one was the worst. <laughs> and then the sixth one uh, was the second worst. Yeah. <sighs> Both made by yours truly. <laughs>
Okay, so what lesson does that teach us? You can't just only take bitter things and mix them together? Yes, uh, you also know, you, you need to know your flavor profile. If you like sweeter things, take a, a slightly bitter beer and mix a sweeter beer with that so that it sweetens it out. If you like bitter things, then you know maybe just add a little bit of sweetness um, you know, to round it out. What I found, honestly, throughout this whole thing, I didn't think I'd learn anything. Tell you the truth. I thought we were just mixing beers. I thought I was going to be like, oh, maybe this beer is a little better, maybe this one's not. I actually learned that if you take a light beer with a dark beer, it's, you're not, it's not going to be totally overpowered by the dark beer. You're going to get the flavor profile of the dark beer, of course, because it's stronger, but you're going to get the lightness of the, of the, uh, like the blonde or the Hefeweizen or the fruit beer, which is kind of cool because if you really like this flavor, the dark flavor, but it's a hot day out, yeah. go ahead and mix it, blend it, if you will, with a lighter beer. And you might just be surprised, honestly, like we were today. Yeah. And if you're afraid of things like IPAs or porters, ease your way in by mixing those into beers that you already know you like. Because it'll give your palate some time to acclimate, I think, to those flavors. For sure. Um, I really like what we did today. I do too. I think, I think we could easily do a few more where we just take different varietals of certain kinds, because of course each beer has its own different um, flavor profiles. This one of course is kind of espresso and chocolate, but I'm sure there are different stouts that are, of course have those similar flavor notes and yeah. profiles, but they're not going to be exactly the same. So if we could just mix a bunch of these together or mix a bunch of those, I'm actually very inter interested to see if it'll taste just like one or if it'll, I could just be like, oh, it's just a stout. Yeah. That one would be just a light beer because that's actually what they do with whiskeys. Uh, they take a bunch of different whiskeys that, you know, you think of whiskey, and if you're not a big whiskey connoisseur, you think most whiskey tastes the same. But to get that unique flavor, they mix, especially newer uh, distilleries that are coming out, they don't just have a ton of whiskey that they made, so they take a bunch from different companies, mm. and they make their own flavor profile from that. So I think it'd be really interesting to try that with different beers. I agree, and I think uh, what's funny, the thing I learned the most today was that I really thought tasting the mixed beers, you could, you would be able to tell, like, oh, these flavors were not meant to be together, and, like, these are three distinct beers that were mixed in one cup, but honestly, if somebody mi did the mixing for us today and put a blindfold on me and I did a blind test, I don't know that I would have been able to tell you the mixed beers from the, just a pure beer. I'm right there with you. You know, because they really do. They The flavors mix together. And now, whether we liked it or not is another story, but that, that would be true just of a single bottle or can. So. I, I agree. And it's, it's kind of weird. It's different from food. You know when you add, like, two foods together that you don't like. Right. And they shouldn't go together. But with these, it's a completely different story. Yeah. Completely new experience. And I don't know. I was very surprised. Let's just say that. Yeah. Uh, so on that note... Uh, thanks for watching. Please check out Johnny's channel and, um, you know, we'll see you again next time. Thanks. See you guys. Cool. Done.